From the boulevards of Paris to the fashionable seaside resorts of the Côte d'Azur, France offers some of the most beautiful scenery in the world. Fairy tale castles, glorious cathedrals, and picture perfect villages delight romantics. The people, very passionate about their culture and art. Even the French cuisine is internationally renowned. From bread and macaroons to wine and champagne, France is the country which literally has the storybook surroundings stirred with the ambience of the 21st century. There is no other nationality known as so effortlessly chic like the French. The French fashion and the French style is admired everywhere, and the whole world identifies it as a classy and elegant style that like the French say, it has something we can't really describe what it is, it is so fluidly snazzy with a worldwide reputation, French fashion has for more than three centuries been the vehicle of an exceptional image linked to luxury and artisanal creation. Fashion is also a heritage for France, and a creative sector whose dynamism is a creator of value and recognition abroad. But how did this happen? How did French fashion rise to prominence around the world? Let's take you back to the very beginning from where it all started. Stay tuned as I tell this incredible story at how France held on to its fashion crown after the royalty who founded it lost their heads. Literally. The insatiable appetite of the French court for opulent dresses drives the country's textile trade, which, in an act of brazen elitism, has been under sovereign rule since Louis XIV, setting the foundation for haute couture. If you know anything about French history, you probably know about King Louis XIV, who is one of the major reasons why French royalty is known for its opulence and excessiveness. Under his reign he deemed that the textile trade of France be under the control of the royal court. Another way King Louis showed off his style was through the elaborate costumes he would wear when he got his royal portrait painted. That time France was the first of its kind to separate different styles into seasons. It's the late 18th century, and Ruffles reign supreme as the aristocracy scrambles to live la Marie Antoinette. Fashion's primary purpose is to signify wealth. If you have the money, this means spurging on frou-frou layers of tall, silk and velvet, along with intricate embroidery and heavy embellishment. Women's fashion echoes one status and place in the upper echelons of society, and is a visualization of the adage that women should be seen, and not heard. Revulsed by the opulence of royalty, an era of anti-fashion follows the French Revolution, society adopts a working-class uniform of aprons, clogs and mob caps. The government draws influence from Greece, and fashion turns towards flowing Grecian gowns that mirror society's fascination with egalitarianism, however, society's rebuttal of opulent fashion would turn out to be a trend itself, and one that would be overtaken, the rise of the middle class, and the interest of even the working classes in fashion, as an art resulted in similar designs being carried across and marketed to various levels of income. At the same time, the rise of haute couture in Paris, in which clothing was custom handcrafted for individuals by famous designers, or houses, catered to the wealthy people who could afford it, brought about the first house designers like Jacques Dowsett, Paul Poirot, and Madeleine Vionnet. This is actually thanks to an Englishman named Charles Frederick Worth, who founded the House of Worth, the first modern couturier house in Paris. In the late 19th and early 20th century, the French fashion industry exploded, Vogue was founded in 1892, they were influenced by Art Nouveau and Orientalist trends, and so finally women, were liberated from corsets and heavy petticoats, and instead wore their whimsical designs with flowing bias-cut dresses. In 1925 a little-known designer called Coco Chanel first came into prominence and revolutionized Paris fashion, and then the world's when she debuted her first collection. Chanel's boyish, simple, and elegant designs were embraced in contrast to the usual designs meant for full-figured women. Chanel reigns to this day as a major player in the luxury fashion world, the start of World War II in Paris meant that fashion was put on hold, understandably so. Many designers were forced to close their fashion houses, and because of rationing on fabric and general disorder throughout Europe, not that many new styles or designs emerged. Fast forward to 1947, where new designer Christian Dior presents his now famous new look designs. The new look included a collection of dresses with very small waists and full skirts. After the horrors of World War II, women were ready to treat themselves to the luxuries of fancy fabrics and elegant designs. It flies in the face of Chanel's free-flowing silhouettes and evokes Marie Antoinette's robe Lafranquaise. 
But, naturally, Dior's new look soon becomes the old look. The house's spring 1958 collection is a stark example of this shapeshift. Following Dior's premature death, his young prodigy Yves Saint Laurent launches his debut trapeze collection. In a move away from his master's established silhouette, the boy wonder reveals a shape that doesn't hug the body, but captures the changing mood. Up until the 1960s, fashion was very standardized. This means that almost everyone was wearing the same styles all of the time, and unless you were very wealthy, you probably only had between two to three outfits to choose between. This all changed in the 1960s when Yves Saint Laurent put Paris on the spot again with his a Prada Porter, ready to wear, line which made fashion accessible to the masses. In fact, even though Paco Rabanne and Pierre Cardin pushed fashion towards the future, creating bold shapes, they always had to stay under YSL's shadow. He was undoubtedly king of the latter part of the century. New techniques contributed to the rapid dissemination of Paris fashions throughout the world. Whereas in the 19th century clients were shown sample dresses and fitted for their own garments in the privacy of couturier's showrooms, by the early 20th century, the fashion show, with its now familiar parade of models wearing the season's new outfits, had become the standard means by which designers introduced their new collections. News of the latest fashions was quickly relayed to magazines and newspapers abroad, and copyists worked overtime to sketch the new designs for production in less expensive ready-to-wear versions. Fashion photography, which by the end of the 1930s had decisively displaced fashion illustration as the preferred means of representing fashion in editorial and advertising copy, also gave rapid publicity to new designs. From then on, inventive designs did not stop being pumped out of Paris, solidifying its place as the fashion capital of the world. In those times France imbued its citizens with innate sense of style, and to this day, fashion holds a significant place in French cultural lives. Paris is at the epicenter of French fashion. Parisian fashion weeks have a reputation like no other, feeding a public hungry for innovation and superior quality, and designs. Paris still is home to several haute couture maisons, such as Dior, Givenchy, Jean-Paul Gaultier, Chanel, and high-end luxury fashion brands such as Saint Laurent, Celine, Hermes, Lanvin and Louis Vuitton. In fact, all the major international brands have a flagship store in Paris region. According to data from the French Fashion Institute, IFM, the fashion industry in France is now worth up to 150 billion euros, or 3.7% of France's GDP, and accounts for more than 1 million jobs. The revenue of the fashion industry in France amounts to over United States dollars 20 billion in 2021. Apparel is the largest segment of the French fashion industry in terms of sales, with a market volume of United States dollars 10 billion in 2021. French style is not a difficult style to pull off, and is not entirely unattainable. It is something effortless, classic, nonchalant, and cool but not arrogant. French style is all about finding the right balance between looking dressed up, and laid back at the same time. It's characterized by neutral colors, clean lines, and timeless basics. When you think of French girl style, visualize fashion and comfort coming together as one. No restrictively tight clothing, or sky-high heels here. Instead, Parisian fashionists reach for simple pieces with straight or slightly tailored silhouettes. Their color palette thrives in shades of black, tan, white and muted blues. They collect quality, easy to mix and match pieces with an evergreen appeal. Most of what we consider Parisian design falls under the umbrella of chic style. This should come as no surprise, considering the term means smart elegance and sophistication. This sartorial genre sticks to the French style rules and dabbles little in the world of fads. Say bite loud patterns and fussy details and hide a solid hues in minimalist construction. There are some items that can most commonly be spotted in the streets of Paris. A blazer, waisted cocktail dress, ballerinas, flats and sneakers, and denim trousers. No French woman or girl would have a closet or wardrobe without these amazing pieces. But, do people think that French fashion is overrated? It has been debated over and over again if French fashion is actually overrated which might or might not be true, because it depends on perspective. But what defines French fashion is confidence. Confidence is going out in shoes that you walk in comfortably and gracefully, whether they are Stan Smith's or Christian Louboutin's. It is wearing blue when pink is in fashion, because you like it, and it suits you. It is bringing a level of attention to detail to the business of dressing yourself for the day, just as you would if you were wrapping a birthday present or cooking a Sunday roast. 
because such things are only little things, but in the end the little things in life, are the big things in life. How are fashion and French culture interrelated? And why are people in France so fashionable? History is perhaps the crucial element in the continued perception of Paris as the epicenter of fashion, and the idea of fashion so strongly rooted in the minds of the French, regardless of whether the historical associations being made, French people take pride in their fashion history, and want to continue this legacy of fashion, and pay great attention to how they look in everyday life. You will notice that many locals have a distinct sophisticated style, which seems effortlessly thrown together. Fashion in France is an important subject in the culture and country's social life. Even in the current scenario it is very difficult to separate fashion from France. It is mainly because of the people of France for whom fashion is not just a desire, but almost a necessity. A want to have an innate personal style that accentuates beauty and charm. Thus fashion is embedded in the French culture so strongly, that this love affair is difficult to break. Even though another city might become paramount during some seasons, Paris remains generally acknowledged as the most important fashion city. Women and men fashion has become extremely similar with gender constraints gradually falling away. Paris continues to be at the forefront of brands with oversized suits and sweaters, designed by brands like Selen to contemporary flavored fashion phonetics. The French hold an enormous sense of reverence for the charms and artistic nuances that fashion brings into our lives. As the creators of modern luxury fashion no other culture is worth such glamour, pure aesthetic allure on the world stage. Despite many new faces on the international fashion scene seeking to steal the Paris claim on the crown, none have yet succeeded. It seems that the French school claim on the style is one that will not be overcome, and as the industry seems to evolve, Paris remains steadfast as the city of love and fashion, and will continue to be an inspiration for many in years to come.